Today I'm going to be customizing slash painting on random things from Walmart. It's surprisingly hard to find good stuff to customize there, but I did manage to pick up some things that I think will look really cool in my creepy cute derpy cartoony kind of style. You know what else would be cool? If you would be able to find these three very mundane items that I found while grocery shopping at Walmart. I've hidden them throughout this video. I'm gonna make it really hard for you guys this time. So I'll be pretty impressed if you can actually find them. I'm starting off with this diary. It's a blue fuzzy bunny, clearly in need of a creepy cute makeover. And also some therapy. Get some help. This diary's got a little lock on it. Cute stuff, keeps things secure. Gotta protect your deepest, darkest secrets. The eyes are definitely too sparkly for my taste, but I do like how fuzzy she is. The lock comes with a key, so I figured I'd try to open it. A few moments later. Not the best quality lock, but I did eventually get it open, so that's nice. Top notch security. Whoops. I lost the key. However, will I write down the names of my enemies? I don't know. <laughs> Turns out the lock isn't as impressive as I originally thought it was. You can pretty much use anything you have on hand to open it. Security is clearly lacking. But that's the least of my concerns. I'm more focused on this very uninspired drink. I think it's supposed to be like boba tea with a kawaii face stamped onto it. Whatever it is, I want none of it. I'm just covering all that up with some blood. It's not just any blood. This bunny's drinking the blood of her enemies. Obviously, I can't leave things looking like this. This is arguably just as, if not more, uninspired as before. I thought about adding some ice cream or something, but then I thought perhaps eyeballs would be more fitting. They're all green and blue eyeballs, courtesy of the eyeball-eating rats, who, as you may or may not recall, are very specific about the eyeballs they consume. For whatever reason, if you have blue eyes or green eyes, you're not safe. I also added some blood clots in, because why not? Adds dimension. Who doesn't like dementia? Dimension. And to tie the whole drink together. I went in with some red fabric paint to give everything a fresh blood kind of look. Overall, in my opinion, the drink's looking pretty appetizing. Moving on, I'm adding some claws to her furry hands. I thought about giving her black nails to make her look more edgy, but I ended up giving her white ones instead. I just feel like this matches with her overall color scheme and vibe better. I want to add blood dripping everywhere, but first, I gave her a little trim. Not everywhere, just little patches of missing fur here and there. I'm trying to flatten out the fur a bit so the puffy paint stays on there better. It's better when the fur isn't as puffy. I gave her bloody fingernails. Kinda looks like it could be red nail polish, but no. It's just the blood of her enemies. Something's still gotta be done about the sparkle in her eyes. I can't stand it for much longer. I'm adding some felt bits and pieces to it. The black parts are her eyelids, in case anyone's confused. My intention was to have her nonchalantly side-eyeing everyone for no reason at all while drinking the blood of her enemies. But in the end, I decided to turn up the derp factor. So now she's not looking as intimidating. She's rather looking more respectful, but in a simple-minded kind of way. Still cute though. I chopped off a piece of her ear, added some blood, and that's pretty much it for this bunny. I probably won't be using this as my diary. Not sure what I'm gonna use this for. If you have any suggestions, feel free to drop them down below. Maybe I'll take them into consideration. <laughs> Next thing I picked up at Walmart is this two-tiered turntable. Assembling it is pretty quick and easy. Very uncomplicated. Just like I like it. I'm taking it apart for now since I need to paint everything, and then once I'm done with it, I'll put it all back together in the end. I didn't feel the need to paint inside the hole since the wood dowels will be covering those up anyways. For the bottom of the tray, that's all gonna be black as well. Not like it's gonna show, but rest assured, it is all black. As for the center of the trays, I've got a couple options. I could paint some of my original characters, which is always cool to see, or I could do something more modern spooky. For me, personally, when I have home decor stuff that's gonna be sitting around my place, I like it to be modern spooky. For my pop of color this time around, I'm using my favorite, Tickle Me Pink. Yeah. Which a lot of you guys have assured me is a very evil color choice. 
So yeah, I feel very reassured and confident in my decision to use Tickle Me Pink. <laughs> I kept getting some pink on the outer edges, which I kept having to touch up, which then kept causing me to get some black paint on the center. So that's always fun. I'm trying to add some shadow, some variance in color. This is a bit difficult for me since I'm not good at blending. I usually just stick to one solid color, no blending involved. That's kind of why I always gravitate towards more of a cartoony style rather than a realistic painting. Painting. <laughs> So I've got these two trays. I've set down the base colors I want, and now I figured I'd add some spider webs. I haven't done this kind of spider webbing detail, so it's a little different from the designs I've done in the past. I've learned a lot from the past. One thing I've learned is less is more. So I'm trying not to overdo the spider webs this time around. It's very easy to go overboard. In my defense, when I decorated my door, I wasn't used to working with webs. It was my first time, so I do have some regrets. Another thing I've learned from the past is to just leave out the spiders, especially if they're bold, in-your-face, aquamarine spiders. It's probably best to just leave them off, so no spiders, and a lot less webbing. That's what I've learned so far. If I learn anything else on my adventures, I'll keep you guys updated. <laughs> I did think about adding some stars inside the webbing, just because I felt like it might need something, but then I thought I was making things too complicated. There is beauty in simplicity. These trays are giving me some kind of vibe, though I'm having trouble pinpointing it. A fancy kind of vibe. Maybe Adam's family? Maybe Charlotte's web? I have no idea. The last thing I picked up is my first piggy bank. It says celebrate. <coughs> though I'm not sure why that's cause for celebration. It's a very plain looking pig. Not a lot going on. It's not made of glass. I think it's made of porcelain. Very reflective surface. You can see my ring light in the reflection. That's annoying. It looks like you're supposed to use this marker provided to write on the pig. Love you, bestie. Aunt Jill. Much love, Caitlin. Marianne. It's kind of like when people sign your cast when you break a leg. I'm not sure why you'd have people sign your piggy bank. <laughs> Who even writes that on a piggy bank? But to each their own. An interesting concept, to say the least. I'm not going to be using the marker, that's kind of pointless, but I do try it out, just to see if it even works on this surface. Turns out it does work, pretty well actually. But I don't have anyone to sign my piggy bank, so I won't be using that today. I'm going over everything with a layer of Mod Podge. I'm using this kind of as a primer to give my pig some texture for the paint to stick to. I just kind of brush that on. All over, everywhere. I like characters and animals that aren't their typical color. I have a whole family of pigs. It's more a whole butcher shop of pigs. They're usually all pink. But today, things are gonna be different. This pig is blue, not your ordinary run-of-the-mill pig. If you look closely, there is some texture on the pig. I tried my best to make everything as smooth as possible. It honestly isn't that noticeable. It looks pretty good to me. I wanted to prevent the base from chipping, so I went ahead and sealed everything in with some glossy varnish before moving forward. I'm sure it would have been fine regardless, but Rar Babe doesn't take chances. I'm basing this pig off Sally, loosely based. It's like Sally's distant relative in pig form. Sally has a lot of different colored patches on her dress. I love her look. I think I think it's very creepy cute, so I'm cutting out some patches for my pig. Not too many. I wouldn't want to overdo it. I planned out where I wanted things to go and then hot glued those on. The patches have to look stitched on, of course, so I went around adding some stitch detail with fabric paint. I added even more stitches and more detailing on the pig, just pulling the look together. For the eyes, I went with two different color, different sizes of buttons. I know Sally doesn't have button eyes, but like I said, this isn't Sally. This is just her distant relative in pig form, which is oddly specific, but it is what it is. Unlike the not-so-secure diary, I do have a purpose for this piggy bank. I have a ton of quarters for laundry I've accumulated over the years, and now I have the perfect place for them. Now that's cause for celebration. I hope you guys liked my Walmart haul and enjoyed the makeover process today. I think everything turned out very creepy cute. Speaking of creepy cute, I now have a gigantic, epic skull LED sign. Wow. Thank you to the team at Illusion Neon for sending me this. This isn't sponsored or anything, they just wanted to send me one. And I just couldn't refuse since I've always wanted a sign like this. They have so many different options. They even make custom LED signs, whatever size your heart desires. I'll leave a link to their website down below. If you're looking to upgrade your life, check them out.